Hello, my name is Caroline Weaver, and I'm from Body and Soul Companion, and we are on week 31, day two of the Spiritual Exercises of Ignatius. This is the commission portion of this week. Later on, we'll do a contemplation to attain the love of God which is beautiful. But right now we're looking at Jesus commissioning. So he, and also a little bit about his appearances. So the resurrection happened. And last week after the resurrection, we looked at his appearances to different people. And then Ignatius has a little part that he puts in, in 1 Corinthians 15. It's an after, and it's by Paul. And he says, after that, he appeared, this is after the resurrection, you know, appearing to the 12. He appeared to Peter, then he appeared to the 12. And after that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, which is the half-brother of Jesus, and he wasn't a believer at the time of Jesus' death. But he became a believer, wrote the book of James, became a leader in the church, um, Anyway, James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. And that's Paul. And that's later that he appeared to Paul. Because Paul was a persecutor of the church beforehand. But the big emphasis that Ignatius makes here, Jesus as the consoler. And yesterday, remember, we read about at the end of that commission, Jesus says, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And I loved how the message version version said, I'm with you day after day after day. I loved that because he's with us. And that is a big emphasis that Ignatius, you know, I I've said this so many times, union and communion. You're, you're with, he's with you. You're like moving forward together. So I just wanted to mention that first Corinthians, or first Corinthians 15, that there were, there, there were appearances. And then this now is the ascension. And we're going to look at Acts 1, 1 through 12, but we're also going to look at Luke 24, 44 through 53, and I'm going to intersperse it. That's why I'm using my chronological harmony of the gospel so I can put them together. So both of those together are what happens in the ascension. So I invite you to close your eyes and find a comfortable spot for yourself in your chair or whatever works for you. I like to get comfortable by putting my heat on. And breathe slowly. Focusing your attention on God. And receive his attention on you. He's looking upon you with love. Receive his love. And with that, Jesus, remember that he's with you right now, day after day. bringing your whole self, your body and your mind, letting go of any tense muscles and also letting go of anything that is distracting you from your focus on God. Lord, we pray that more of our day would be directed to your presence and praise overflowing into our service. And 
And Lord, we seek the grace to experience a deepening sense of joy with Jesus in response to his commission. Forty days later. Now he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And that's Luke 24, 44 through 49. And now, Acts 1 through 2. Eight first. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after being giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, You heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And so when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. So that's the prelude. And back to Luke. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came about that while he was blessing them, he parted from them. And so now we'll look at Acts, which overlaps with that. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was departing, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. And they also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. And then they returned to Jerusalem with great joy from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And they were continually in the temple praising God. So I invite you to imagine who you are in the scene. I would suggest being one of the 11 disciples, a 
apostles, or you could be a friend of Jesus who's just tagged along. So I want you to imagine being up on the Mount of Olives on the southeastern slope of the Mount of Olives. That's where Bethany was. So I want you to look out from there. What can you see? The Mount of Olives takes the name from the many olive groves that grew there. And significantly, to set the scene, it was believed by Jews to be the spot where the resurrection of the dead would first take place. And that was prophesied in Zechariah 14.4. And as a result, many Jews wished to be buried in the large cemetery there. Today, it has more than 150,000 graves, but there were also many graves at the time of Christ. And they were man-made, many of them were man-made caves dug into the soft sediment rock. Just remember that the village of Bethany was where Lazarus was risen from the dead and often Jesus would stay there when he visited Jerusalem. So try to picture the landscape surrounding the mountain. Jesus has been with you for 40 days, appearing to many over those 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Are you beginning to understand more and more in those 40 days? So imagine that he's led you out as far as Bethany. And look at Jesus as he lifts his hands and blesses you standing there. And after his blessing, and even while he's blessing, see Jesus lifted up. What does that look like? What are you feeling? it up, shining in the light of his glory. Imagine that. And see the cloud receive Jesus. And you see him no more. Continue to gaze intently up at the sky. And then notice two men in white clothing standing beside you. How do you feel? Are you shocked? Surprised? Scared? What do you feel? Noticing these two man, men standing beside you. And hear them say, 
Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. Just sit that future and also just ponder what Jesus had also said earlier to not leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, the Holy Spirit. And so you remember this, and you return with the disciples to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Away. And you're returning with great joy. So look at the faces of all the people there. What does the look of great joy look like on their faces? And then go into the temple and praise God. some things to ponder and to reflect on. How did you feel as you watched Jesus being taken up into heaven? And then although Jesus, you, will no longer, if you were living as Jesus' friend in that situation, they'll no longer experience the physical presence of Jesus. He does promise to send the Holy Spirit to them. How does that make you feel? He's promised to not be there in the flesh, but be with you as the Holy Spirit is a member of the Trinity. So I invite you to take your candle and have a conversation with God about this meditation. And I'll see you tomorrow for Pentecost and the Holy Spirit coming down, as Jesus promised. Be blessed.